in a dream world, you can cast whoever you want, right? And those people can all be brilliant. You can cast a load of brilliant actors. But the fact that, that all the actors work well together, the fact that everyone together has a certain chemistry, the fact that this ensemble works, this huge picture of people, that everyone is great. I just think there's a bit of magic. I think there's a bit of luck in that. The end in terms of Ted's story, we always knew. It was a three season thing where in the end Ted is going to leave. Jason had a few things where he's like, this definitely happens, this definitely happens, this definitely happens. And then the rest is you finding ways to those markers. And along the way, lots of things change and inspire other things. But these markers remain. They never changed. So long, farewell, I'll be the same One of the uh, sort of joys and challenges is that all of the characters are so great and all of the actors turned out to be so great. Every character, even people that have had one line, you sort of go, oh, we could do more with that. Like every, everyone else felt so realized. You get to the point where you have a scene where someone delivers a paper and you start thinking, let's not have someone deliver the paper because we're going to fall in love with that character. They'll be great. And then we're going to have to write, <laughs> we're going to have to write a whole arc for the guy that delivered the paper <laughs> in American Werewolf in London which you if you ever watched that I think one of the reasons it's like a classic is everyone even the people that have two lines three lines they're all they're all characters they're all fully they're all funny they're all interesting the police that show up for one scene are funny like I feel that way about Ted Lasso it's like all the parts there's no small parts in Ted Lasso and I say how do we fit all of this in one of the answers is make it longer <laughs> you you have to write all your characters with love and that includes the person that walks past Ted and calls him a every day. You know what I mean? Like, you end up falling in love with that character, like, all of them. You spend six months, probably, in that writer's room with boards, and you're thinking so many variations of things. And sometimes the, the, these issues are solved in the writer's room, but sometimes they're all kind of percolating. Sometimes it just happens on set. Like, Jason might go, oh, you should, this should happen. And as soon as it's said, it's like, yeah, obviously that should happen. But we hadn't thought of this for nine months, you know what I mean? It's like something clicks into place and you'll go, yes, that was the thing. That was the thing that was like floating in the air above us. And at some point it was grabbed, you know what I mean? Your Uncle Roy and I have something we need to tell you. Okay, uh, what? We're going we on a break. Up. Which is it? Well... We broke up. I'm devastated they broke up. Like, it's really sad. It's really sad. I often think that there's a misunderstanding with Ted Lasso as a show that it's... And I get it. And I think it, I think if you didn't watch it, if you just heard about it or saw, like, the kind of posters and stuff, I, there's this idea that it's this, like, feel-good, lovely, warm show. And I think it is. But it's also quite dark and and has quite a lot of darkness in it and heaviness and really i think the show was ultimately about people trying to be better and that's it like as in and that and in some cases they don't get very far but at least they're trying and it's not as sort of warm and lovely and magical as it is it's not a fairy tale it doesn't go like and here's everyone's happy ending it's like they win the game they don't win the league you know they win the battle they don't win the war it's like it's it's still in the middle of the story like nothing a lot of it isn't resolved really but what we ha what we have seen is that everyone to varying degrees is slightly better than they were and they are still trying i like the fact that some things aren't resolved so that i can dream what i want to dream now in my dream there's a lot of roy and keely and there's a lot of roy and keely and jamie <laughs> and the truffle is, is is absolutely fine with me i think if it, i think in in my dream version you know it's a thruple it's mostly Roy Keeley, but jamie joins in occasionally you know what i mean <laughs> like there are people that like is the end of the show a dream is it not a dream and and i've heard some people have answered that and i i always think like we shouldn't answer these things because it's kind of up to you like i like that you make this thing and then you hand it over to the audience and everyone could take from it what they want it to be. I didn't have many scenes with Juno this year and that was so sad. I was intimidated, like I was scared to, to work with her because she's amazing and, and her career has been making very serious, very independent, proper art house. She's a proper actor. And when Jason said, what about Juno? I, I remember thinking, what? And, and being scared, like, well, obviously I can't keep up with Juno. She'll be 
she'll be I don't know what I was expecting I sort of I guess I was expecting her to be a amazing but be sort of intimidating and difficult or something and she was immediately like we're safe together whatever you need let's talk you know we're we're a, we're a unit on this and in a scene and how she is as an actor is she just gives you light and then you just have to give it back so then that all balanced out balanced out by having 70% of my scenes with Phil Dunster who is the, you know the other great love of my life so I actually I'm a very lucky boy whichever way you look at it we got chemistry we're either going to headbutt each other or kiss each other and we never know what and uh Phil is disgustingly talented. He can sing, he can dance, he can do front flips, he can act, he can do comedy, he can do sound effects, he can he can play football very well. Like he there's really nothing he can't do other than believe in himself enough. In a dream world you can cast whoever you want, right? And those people can all be brilliant. You can cast a load of brilliant actors. But the fact that, that all the actors work well together the fact that everyone together has a certain chemistry the fact that this ensemble works this huge picture of people that everyone is great i just think there's a bit of magic i think there's a bit of luck in that for the past year i have busted my f trying to change but apparently i'm done f because i'm still me He's completely changed my life. He's changed my life in in all the ways. Like, you know, I used to just make stuff and then it's like kicking it down a well, like, see ya. <laughs> you know? And so to 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 be in this thing that people have watched and it and it's seismically different. I don't know how long the window is open, you know what I mean? But it feels like there's a window where for however long it might be a few months, but where I can at least get in the door to talk to certain people that I might be like, oh, I have this thing I'd really like to show you or make with you. So that's very exciting and, and it's a real privilege. And then, like I said, I have no idea how long that window is open because it could close tomorrow and you go, all right, well, that was fun. <laughs> it's just weird. It's just weird. I don't, I don't know if you ever get used to it. It's weird because you forget and you're just sort of living your life and then suddenly someone and you're like, oh, oh, right. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You think, oh, I'm just trying to buy some bananas <laughs> you know people are very nice and you you always have to just be like wow well you know thanks but it's odd i don't know if you get used to it why did bernard get you toothpaste and mouthwash for christmas babe because he taught everyone my brother's rents it a teen school high school drama with phoebe would be great but I'd, I'd like it also to be a musical a zombie musical you wouldn't not watch it I wouldn't mind making a a religious drama with uh, Higgins' son, who's the priest, and I would also be open to in uh, Beard After Hours uh, when he gets chased by the scary man and the scary man with the woman with the red dress, and it turns out they're a couple. I would like to follow their relationship now they've had the baby, the ins and outs, and his work and his work life and her work life. But listen, I'm just one of the writers.